DoorDash versus Uber Eats, which one should you work for? Well, having done both, I've come up with the pros and cons list that can help you uh, decide which one uh, might work out best for you. So first, uh, the onboarding, the signing up for um, DoorDash, it's very simple. You just sign up online or on the app. Uh, it takes no time whatsoever, and you're basically onboarded within like minutes. Uh, and you're able to tell them which vehicle you want to use, that's a car, scooter, bicycle, motorcycle, any and all the above. Uh, and you can switch those anytime you want in the app, uh, or you can do it on their website. Uh, Uber Eats, a little different. Uh, you sign up on the website or the app, uh, and then for a vehicle, you have to um, yeah, uh, upload your registration to verify you have it. It can only be a uh, you know, car, uh, scooter under 50 cc's uh or bicycle uh so you can't just use any like 150 cc scooter it has to be a, a slow one basically that can only go up to 30 miles per hour uh which is a little off-putting because i mean scooters get great miles per gallon so but anyways so signing up i give that to doordash uh, and the vehicle selection i give that to doordash uh, and then comes the pay. This is the big one. Uh, DoorDash on their on their screen. Once you get an order, you basically see what you're gonna get, including the tip. Uh, if you get ten dollars, you're gonna get uh, ten dollars. If that's what pops up. Uh, with Uber Eats, they give you a number. It says estimated tip included, but it'll be like two or three dollars, and you're like, huh? But then once you complete the order, uh, then you get the tip. So if you see a two or three dollar order. Uh, then it's usually like a ten dollar order. Well, hopefully, if they don't tip you, then you are screwed, and you're you're left with that two or three dollar order. Uh, so uh, that plays a big factor. Uh, personally, right now, I'm I'm really trying out Uber Eats a lot, uh, and getting lucky with the tips. With DoorDash, you know they tip you first. So with Uber Eats, they tip you after delivery. So if you have a good handoff, it can really affect your tip. You know, especially if the order has issues and you have good communication, uh, Uber Eats, uh, you favor in that direction because then your tip will actually reflect uh, how your service was. Uh, and I try to put on a smile, wink, uh, and hopefully it gives me a good tip. Uh, so that's something really big to think of. Uh, so when you're accepting orders with DoorDash, I feel like the screen is much, much better. You can see a lot better information. It's a lot crisper and clearer. You can see where the pickup is, where the drop off is. Uh, with Uber Eats, it's not as easy to tell. Like once you get an order, the, the 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 map like flips in a weird direction. You can't tell if you're going uptown, downtown, left or right, east or west. Um, and then also the information they give you with DoorDash, it, it tells you how many items there's going to be. Uh, and with Uber Eats, it doesn't. So say you're on a bicycle or a scooter and you can't have 10 items, you're not gonna know that with Uber Eats. You show up and then you'd be like, oh, I have to cancel, I can't carry all this. But with DoorDash, it shows you all the information. So it's really helpful if you're trying to pick and choose based on uh, your vehicle selection. So that goes to uh, DoorDash. As far as like dual orders, like two orders, DoorDash wins again. I mean, they show you where the second pickup will be. Uh, and they give you good information, distance, time, etc. With Uber Eats, uh, sometimes you get that second order and then you see the price, you see the distance, but yet you click it and then you're like, wait, uh, this is way out of where I normally would, would go. It's like a $3 delivery for like 20 miles. Uh, and the information screen on Uber Eats sometimes is just like very, very misleading. Uh, so they need to figure this out because those dual orders you know, are great great way to make money but on uber eats the second the second order is when you select them sometimes it like throws you on a, a loop and you're like what the hell uh so something to really uh, consider there lastly uh, the navigation you know, doordash uses google maps uber eats uses its own navigation and the uber eats navigation is great actually very specific it shows you exactly where you're going to each house doordash with google maps can be a little vague and lead you to the wrong address sometimes uh, but yeah, Uber Eats wins this one. As far as scheduling goes, uh, with DoorDash, you have to put yourself on the schedule. Uh, so that means even if it's busy, uh, you can click Dash now and start immediately. But you have to schedule when you think you're going to work until. 
Uh, you can always extend this dash too, but um, say it's 2 p.m., it's busy, you want to start, you, you can click dash now if, if there's orders out there, uh, but you have to say when you're going to go until, so say uh, 2.30, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5. Uh, and at the same time, not all these time slots will be open. You know, if it is busy, then the whole day will be open. You can click it until nighttime or whatever. But sometimes it won't be that busy that day, and you only have like a two-hour time slot, and then who knows what. Uh, but like I said, you can most likely extend the dash once it gets to like dinner time, and you can extend it till nighttime, but it, it varies, nothing's guaranteed. Uh, with Uber Eats, really, you just go on the app, you click go. Uh, and then you're online. You know, sometimes it'll make you verify uh, your face or choose your vehicle just to make sure you're not a robot. Uh, but really, with Uber Eats, you just click go, you're online immediately, and that's it. Um, so it's super easy with that. As far as promotions uh, and like a heat map that shows you where, uh, what areas are busy and how much uh, bonus you're going to get for those areas, uh, with DoorDash, typically it'll range from uh, about a dollar to, I've seen even like $4 uh, per zone. Um, and it shows this heat map, uh, and the darker the color, the more busy it is. So usually the heat map will re reflect upon that. Um, but but these zones, um, they stay active for uh, certain time slots. So for example, like a lunch slot 11 to two, um, or dinner slot five to nine, You know that whole zone will be will have that promotion, that $3 promotion, regardless, uh, until the time's over. And you can see these promotions a couple days in advance too. So that's when people put themselves on the schedule so they can be in these hot spot zones uh, and know they're gonna make a guaranteed extra $3 per hour or two fifty dollars per hour or whatever. Uh, as far as Uber Eats, it's a, it's a little different. They have these heat zones, um, but they don't last as long. Uh, for example, I get a lot of 1.1x zones. So 1.1 times what you normally would get is what you get in this zone. Uh, but um, they have that, and they also have these these live zones. You know, if it's um, they need a driver quickly, they'll put up in like a really specific certain location, uh, one dollar, or maybe two dollars, and then once someone picks that up, uh, basically the zone will like disappear. Uh, but it only lasts, it's not for hours, it's like minutes, uh, and it's really live, so uh, they fluctuate, they change throughout the day, so that you can't predict. Uh, but, uh, so in this regard, I would give it to, uh, to DoorDash, you know, being able to see uh, ahead of time how much extra money you're going to get per delivery, and it lasts for hours, so that's great. Um, as far as uh, declining orders, uh, in DoorDash, it's a pain. Uh, say you get like a horrible order that's like 20 miles and like a dollar or whatever. You're definitely not gonna take that unless you're crazy. Uh, so you have to click, you, know, you decline, you're not gonna take it. And then this whole menu pops up of, of things you have to click and you're driving and you're busy at the moment. Uh, so a lot of times I'll just click whatever and then do next. But really you have to choose an option, a reason why you're not accepting that order. Uh, for example, oh, the distance is too far or uh, order's too small, or uh, I have too many orders, or like uh, I, my dash ends soon and I don't want to take it, etc. But you have to click one of these and then click next um, in order to get back to the main screen, uh, which is a pain. Uh, in Uber Eats, you literally just click the X on the top right and that's it, and, and then you're on to the next one. So Uber Eats uh, wins with declining orders, it's just so much easier. And then as far as you know, wanting to take a break, uh, or, or just stopping for the day. Um, with DoorDash, you have the option uh, to pause your dash. Uh, since you're on a schedule, uh, you can pause it for about 30 minutes uh, and then resume uh, within those 30 minutes. If you don't, you're gonna get your dash ended and then you're gonna have to reschedule yourself, which doesn't always work out because someone might have taken your time slot. Um, so that's a pain, all right? With Uber Eats, you can just go offline anytime you want, click go, go right back online, uh, like nothing else. So uh, Uber Eats really wins in this one. You can just take a break whenever you want. You can start whenever you want. You can end whenever you want. Um, so I hope this information was helpful. You know, If you like this video, please give it a like, uh, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Uh, but the main thing is, you know, just keep working at it, keep grinding, keep making that money, and I'll see you next time. Bye now.